If you've thought about taking a DNA test for genealogy, there are some things that you need to consider that they didn't tell you about in those ads that you saw on TV. Hi, I'm Amy Johnson Crow, here to give you tips, tricks, and encouragement to help you discover your family history. And today we're talking about the five things that you need to know about DNA tests for genealogy. The first thing to know is that not everyone takes a DNA test for the purpose of their genealogy. A lot of people have seen the commercials on TV or maybe online, and they're really intrigued by that ethnicity estimate. And for a lot of people, that's the only reason that they take the test. They just want to see that pie chart. So when they show up as a match for you and you send them a message all excited, well, if they're not really taking that test in order to discover something about their family history, about making matches with cousins, they may not be as interested in responding. But that's okay. Just because they're not interested now doesn't mean that they won't be interested at some point later. I've heard this happen to so many people that they have sent out a message to a DNA match and they don't get a response for a year or two or three. So again, just because they don't respond now doesn't mean that they're not going to. On the other hand, if you're one of those people who have taken a DNA test because you're really interested in that ethnicity estimate, don't be surprised or alarmed when people start contacting you. So many people use these DNA tests to break down brick walls in their family history, to uncover things that paper records often don't reveal. So don't be surprised or alarmed if somebody contacts you and they're interested in their family history. Your DNA might be giving them the clue that they need to break down their brick wall. Okay, the second thing to keep in mind when taking a DNA test, it's an ethnicity estimate. To say that that pie chart or that graph that you get that breaks down your ethnicity, to say that that's an estimate would really be an understatement. It's called an estimate for a reason. As genetic genealogist Blaine Bettinger pointed out in an interview I did with him, those estimates are really good on the continent level. It's where you start breaking it down into countries that it starts to become a little bit more problematic. The problem is that these estimates are based on people living today who can trace their lineage back hundreds of years in the same location. For example, Ancestry DNA, as of this recording, has about 56,000 DNA samples that they use in their reference panels. So they're taking the DNA of these living people and extrapolating what about their DNA marks them as being from a specific country. And you can see where that isn't always going to be exact. And in fact, over time, the various DNA companies have changed their algorithm based upon these reference samples and also as the science has evolved. So that's another thing to be aware of. That ethnicity estimate is going to change. Your DNA doesn't change, but how that ethnicity estimate is being calculated will change. It is just an estimate. It doesn't mean that because it comes back saying that 20% of your ancestry is Swedish, it doesn't mean that the next time the Winter Olympics roll around that you have to root for Sweden 20% of the time. And this ties into the third thing that you need to keep in mind with DNA tests for genealogy, and that is that ethnicity estimate might not match your paper research. Or another way of saying this is, why isn't my Native American DNA showing up? So not only is it important to remember that the ethnicity estimate is just an estimate, but we also have to keep in mind that these reference panels in this estimate is based on our origins way, way back. 
So it is possible for an ethnicity to show up in your ethnicity estimate, but you haven't identified an ancestor from that country yet. When I first took an Ancestry DNA test, the ethnicity estimate said that I was 19% Scandinavian. Well, I have yet to find any Swedish or Danish or Norwegian ancestors in my family tree. And Ancestry has changed the algorithm. I lost quite a bit of my Scandinavian ancestry. But remember, what they're doing is they're taking those living people and extrapolating those origins way, way back. I mean, hundreds, even thousands of years ago. But this also cuts both ways. A specific ethnicity might not show up even when your research does show it. I hear from people saying, well, I know that my third great-grandmother was Native American, so why isn't any Native American DNA showing up in my ethnicity estimate? But we have to think about how DNA works. If that third great-grandmother is the only Native American ancestor that you have, well, it's possible that not enough of her DNA made it down to you to show up in your results. In this case, it doesn't mean that you don't have Native American ancestors. It just means it didn't show up in your DNA. But here's where I do need to caution you about Native American ancestry and stories that have been passed down in your family. Just because you have a story that great-great-grandma was Native American and, oh, here's her photo, and look, she has dark hair and high cheekbones, she had to be Native American. Not so much. Dark hair, high cheekbones are not proof of Native American ancestry. But that's a topic we'll cover another day. All right, the fourth thing that you need to know about taking a DNA test for genealogy, your results can be different than those of your brothers and sisters. Remember back in biology class, when you learned that you get half of your DNA from your father and half from your mother. And it's true of your siblings. They also get half of their DNA from dad and half of their DNA from mom. But we don't all get the same half. It's not like there's just this giant chunk, you know, 50% here it is, and you get it and you get it and you get it. It's kind of a, a mishmash of what you get from each parent. I mean, think of it this way. If you and your brothers and sisters all got ex the exact same DNA from your parents, you'd be identical. But that's why siblings' results are often, you know, in fact, usually are different, both in the ethnicity estimate and even in the matches that you have. Yes, you have the same parents. Yes, you are siblings, but it's perfectly normal and expected to have different ethnicity estimates and different DNA matches. But that brings us up to the fifth thing that you really do need to know about a DNA test, and that is there can be surprises. This is probably the most important thing to know about a DNA test. It is crucial to remember that there can be surprises. Are you prepared to go through your results and discover a match to a half sibling that you didn't know about? Or maybe a half aunt or half uncle that you didn't know about before? What if your sibling's test comes back and you don't share enough DNA that you're actually siblings? you're only half siblings. As Judy Russell pointed out in an interview I did with her, we really do need to think about the ethics of genetic genealogy. And we do need to consider informed consent before we ask a relative to take a test on our behalf. And if you think, Amy, if I find some sort of surprise, it's not gonna make a difference one way or the other, I encourage you to listen to an interview that I did with a friend of mine who took a DNA test just on a whim, just to see what it was like. And she discovered that the man she called dad was not actually her biological father. 
and the impact that it had on her life as well as the lives of her half-siblings. I hope that this video has been helpful. If so, hit that like button. I really appreciate it. And check out these other videos of mine that can help you even more with your DNA journey. Happy researching!